Digimon Seekers began serialization on April 3rd, 2023, right after Digimon Ghost Game ended. Over the eight months since its release, it has received mixed reviews from fans that I've spoken to. Though, what if it just reached a point where it could get good? For the first time in months, I'm excited for the next issue to come out? What is this? Welcome to Digimon Dr Seekers up to chapter 4-5, and I want to talk about some of the developments we've gotten in this chapter so far that has seen so much more action than chapter 3 could ever dream of doing, and has finally given me something to be excited about. So, do be aware, if you are not caught up on Digimon Seekers up to this point, chapter 4-5, there will be spoilers ahead. So do be aware of that. But, if you are sticking around, I assume you want to hear about what's been happening. So. Chapter 4 has all been about the attack on the gate, trying to get through the gate into the next area in order to actually seek out the DMIA people, mainly at this point Saya and Leon. Though, I'm assuming at this point, since this technology has been around long enough, there's probably more than just those two, but they're the only two we have names for and care about, so I'm sure that's all we're actually going to look for. I mean, why, why would we want to, you know, test this out on other people and try and help others too when, you know, they don't have names. They must not be important. But, I digress. So, the Digi Police are coming in to stop them. Why? Why did the Digi- I understand the Digi Police want to keep order in cyberspace. Like, they want to make sure that the things that actually are affecting the human world stay under control. Why do they care about the gate? It's clear when the gatekeeper shows up in Omnimon that he attacks them, so there is no love between the two. There is no bond and agreement with them that they work together. So why is it that Yulin was so against Kosuke, or Tartarus as he's better known as, in this case? Just, it's an old rivalry they have to stop them because that's just kind of what they've always done they don't even think about what they're doing anymore i mean i suppose that could be but it doesn't really seem like this is technology has been around for all that long to make them completely forget about and just blindly stop each other so when we begin and we have two megas clashing against each other with the rugerman and aureoman what do we expect Edgy to do in this case? He just re he can reach champion and had a dark evolution ultimate. So we've already put our main character that we're pretty much generally following, though there have been times we haven't, in a situation where there's not much he can do. And yeah, sure, he goes and took care of a couple high commandramon and actually was able to reach ultimate level. So yay, okay, so something did happen. But, you know, to at least try and put him on a level that could have possibly done something here. You could have just had him reach ultimate in the chapter where nothing happened. Where we spent six, seven issues just on a flashback. There could have been two, maybe three. <clears throat> yeah, this, 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 this novel has a big uh, pacing issue. It's really one of the biggest problems with it. If you're not being annoyed by the machine translations, making it not always the easiest thing to read in general. So... We have it now that they have the three prototype Digimon. The interfaces in their foreheads were the key to getting through the gate. He was able to defeat Aureomon and knock them unconscious and hold them so that he could do the gate break. Okay, so, yeah sure, the, her protege came in and tried to stop them, but that just proved the gatekeeper was attacking them and she ended up not doing anything except to introduce Brigadramon for those of us who hadn't already seen him in the trailer. There was so much in the trailer that spoiled everything, so I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll try not to show anything in this video that actually spoils things that are still to come. Because, yes, there are still things in the trailer that have not happened yet, and I'm not particularly happy that I know it, but in order to cover it for you, I watched it. So I'll save you the problem of not having to. And so all three of them at the end of this chapter are pulled through that gate. Them and, well... Mostly their partners, because they're actually tied to their Digicores, that's how it works here. It's really the three Digimon that are pulled through, the humans just happen to be with them. So we know everything from what we've been told so far, is the gatekeepers, the gate, everything is meant to keep out Digimon that have been tainted at all by humans. That's why there's the slums and everything. These are just pure Digimon that can't return because they've been tainted by humans. Therefore, so you're going back in and you're looking for Saya and Leon, or a Black Agumon and Pulsemon. 
that have a human imprinted into their digicore. You can't be more tainted by a human than that. So, what is going on there? Are they constantly in hiding on the run and have to be scared every living day that they're in the digital world because everything is hunting them? Or is this just the gate and Yggdrasil being a jerk like he usually is and not reflecting what everybody in the digital world believes and forcing his own ideals above everything else? Now, because of what we've seen in the trailers, those of you who've seen it, this is going to likely go pretty well. And so we can't spend that long here in the digital world outside of a couple issues. This is going to end up being like Cybersleuth, where we're only going to spend like an hour at most in the digital world in that entire 40-hour game. I have a great feeling that that's what's going to happen here. They're just going to go in there. They're going to have some tracker, be able to find them easily, and they're not going to be, you know, blown to smithereens or, you know, so hidden they can't find them because we can't spend enough time there to do that. Maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe they will. And we'll just fix things. But please, prove me wrong, Digimon Seekers. Show me that we've been building for these 40-plus issues now that something really is happening here. Sure, you had a good fight. You had a decent start to this chapter. And I, I have faith that things will continue to be action-packed and moving forward. So, show us what the digital world is here. You have built it up so much to seem like something that's that different. It has five different layers, as you showed us in this diagram. There's so many different things that you could do here. Again, the digital world is always made to be a little different for every season. You can adapt it to be really whatever you need to for your story because it's all digital. It's so easily edited and changed, not just for in the writer's perspective, but just in general, you can write whatever you need. And so we have pushed past the gatekeeper and we're into the digital world. Now what's stopping that gatekeeper from just turning around now that they know that they're in there and how could they possibly stop him or if he tried to actually attack to rookies in Pulsemon and Black Agumon it would be really bad. I mean maybe because Pulsemon and Leomon are still together he can still become his mega form. Thank you whatever it's called. I don't actually remember his line very well at this point <laughs> because this hasn't made me that invested to care. But for once, I'm excited, and I want to just let everybody know that there's still hope. I don't know necessarily if it's going to be enough, if it's going to change and really be able to be something that I really enjoy, but at least there's hope. And that's different than what I've had for a long time through the whole last chapter, pretty much, of this web novel. And that's all I want. Give me good stories, give me interesting characters, character growth. All those things that really makes Digimon, that makes the good seasons, and not so much what we just got in the last season. But let me know what you guys think. What do you think will happen in the digital world? Do you think it'll go as smoothly? Do you think that having someone from the Digi Police with them pulled into the world is going to be a big problem? Is Yulin still going to be very combative with them? Or now that she's there and looking for Saya, she's going to be all just like, oh, okay. You beat the snot out of me and basically used me to open the gate, but that's fine. We're here to help our friend now. I don't know. I don't necessarily know enough about you, Lynn, at this point to know how she'll react. But it'll be an interesting discussion, and hopefully we'll find out soon enough what happens, and hopefully it's just good and satisfying, and, well, it won't make everybody happy. Nothing ever will. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more from me. And as always, everyone, it's going to be awesome. Until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.